Hey everybody, hope you all are doing well. Um, in this video, I want to go over modes, and I want to try to answer one simple question. What is the point of a mode? I mean, what can you do with it? What does it mean for a piece of music to be in a mode, as opposed to in a major key or a minor key? What kind of chords can you make with it? You know, what, what can you do with one? Now, I'm going to assume that you're at least roughly familiar with what a mode is. If not, I did a video a couple weeks ago called Introduction to Modes, which should get you up to speed. Um, but even if you have watched that, this is kind of a more advanced lesson, so I'm going to put links to all the topics that I think you ought to know before attempting this one. But if you're feeling good, we'll dive right in. Now we're going to start by comparing a major scale with a Lydian mode. So major scale looks like this. I'm sure you know this. And if you don't, you probably shouldn't be watching this video. Um, okay, so you're going to start on the note, go over a whole step. That's your second note. Another whole step. Whole half step, get you to note number four. Whole step, note number five. Whole step, whole step. And then a little half step kind of takes you back to where you start. There's a major scale. Now, a Lydian mode is almost the same thing. Starts on a note, goes over a whole step, whole step, and then here's the difference. Note number four is slid over. Actually, I wanted to write that in red. That's why I've been holding that red marker. And then everything else is exactly the same. And that's it. That's the difference between a Lydian mode and the major scale. Now this doesn't seem like much, right? I mean, the, the Lydian scale, it's it has the slightest possible difference that you could you could do. I mean, we took one note and slid it over a half step. Like, it doesn't get any more subtle than that. But if you think about what a scale is, like a major scale, it's not really anything on its own. And if you sat down at a piano and you played a major scale, no one's going to be impressed. Like, you haven't really done anything. If you imagine, like, a painter, you know, squirted out a bunch of paints onto their paint palette and then said, hey, look what I did, you'd be like, now, there's, there's more to it than that. Same idea here, the scale on its own, it's not really anything. But what you do with the scale is what matters. And there's really only two different things you can do. We have this set of notes, a set of seven notes, and we can either play them at the same time and get chords, or play them one after another and create melodies, right? In fact, I'll even write that out. Chords and melodies. So we're going to look at the different ways that these notes turn into chords and melodies and how that compares to the way these notes turn into chords and melodies. And that's what this lesson is going to be all about. Now, in order to really think about this, we kind of need it in more concrete terms. So let's look at actual notes on an actual, albeit tiny piano. So let's say we're in G. We're going to look at a G major scale and a G Lydian scale. And I'm actually even going to write this on the keys. So if we're in G, and we're doing a major scale, note number one would be G, so I'll make that note number one. Note number two, since it's going over a whole step, that would be A, B, I'll assume you kind of get the idea here, note number four, five, six, and then note number seven, since we're going up a whole step, is an F sharp, so this is the best I can do for F sharp. Okay, there's G major. Now, like I said, the only difference with G Lydian is that note number four is scooted over by a half step, so it's a C sharp. So in that case, note number four will be there. Now, let's start with this side of the spectrum, chords. Now think about what happens when you, when you take a major scale and you turn these notes into chords. The, the whole concept the way you build a chord is you would choose a note to start on. So in this case, we'll start on note number one. And this is going to turn into our one chord, which is pretty logical. And, and the pattern for making chords is you, you begin on a note. You skip over a note. So you would wind up here. This would be the middle note of the chord. And then you skip over, well, I shouldn't say note. You skip over a scale degree and you wind up over here. This would be the, the third note in the chord. Now, obviously, I'm skipping over a lot of explanation here. So there's a whole video on this topic if you're not sure. But in the case of this G major scale, when we're building our one chord, it means we start here, and that note would be a G since we're in, we're in G major. 
The next note in the chord would be a B, and then the, the last note in the chord would be a D, which spells G major, more or less. So note number or chord number one, G major. Now think about how this would work if now we're using this set of notes, if we're in G Lydian. In G Lydian, we'll start on note number one, we're still building chord number one, so that would be, well, would be a G. Skip over a note to scale degree number three, that gives us a B, and then skip over here to note number five, and that gives us a D. So a G major again. I realize that's kind of anticlimactic, but we have a G major. Now, hopefully you can kind of see where this is going. If we take note number two, so in G major land, that means we're starting on an A, and then number four, note number six, that creates our two chord, and in this case it's an A minor chord. A minor. But in G Lydian land, we start on note number two, go to note number four, and this is where it's different. Note number four is a C sharp. Go to note number six, and that gives us this. This gives us an A major chord. So in G Lydian, A major. Now, this might not seem like a huge deal, but it is a huge deal. This changes everything. If you think about a G major scale or a G major key and you're, you're playing chords and you go to play your two chord, you would play an A minor chord. But if you're writing something in G Lydian and you go to play your two chord, you would play an A major chord. And that means that your chord progression is going to sound different, it'll have a different mood, that, that chord is going to have a different tendency. Everything about that chord progression becomes different. It's as if you took that chord progression and played it in a minor key. It's going to have a completely different feel in a minor key. The same thing is happening here. So the possibilities really start to open up. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, let's go through some of these other chords, and I'll go a little quicker here. So if we want to make chord number three, that would be note three, five, and seven, and you can see that nothing's really going to change there between the major and the Lydian. So that would be three, five, seven, so that's our B minor chord. Chord four, this one's especially interesting because it's not even the same chord. Like it doesn't start on the same note. In G major, four, six, and remember this kind of wraps around so we'll wind up on one over here. So that would be four, six, and one. So there's our major four chord, C major. But in G Lydian, that's a C sharp diminished. Not even, the, not even the same starting note. And that's going to behave very differently than the C chord. Then the rest of these, chord five starts on a, a D in this case, so five, seven, which is our F sharp, and then we're wrapping around so here, so that gives us a D major. Same thing here. Um, chord six, B six, one, and three, get the idea here. And then chord number seven is also going to be a different chord. It'll be seven, two, and four. So in this case, this will be our F sharp diminished. And in G Lydian, it will be, can't really do that there. Um, there we go, F sharp minor. Now actually, if you think about this logically, the fact that there are three different chords should make perfect sense. As long as we're talking about basic chords, meaning chords that only have three notes in them, then the note that we changed, it's either going to be the first note in a chord, which in this case would be our C chord, or turned into a C sharp chord, or it's going to be the middle note of a chord, which affected our, our A chord, or it's going to be the last note in a chord, which affected the F sharp chord. But it can't really be anything else. So if you change one note and you're looking at chords that have three notes in them, three of those chords are going to change. Now if we started talking about seventh chords, seventh chords have four notes in them and that means that that note that we change will either be the first note in the chord, the third of the chord, the fifth of the chord, or the seventh of the chord, meaning the, the last note. So four different chords are, would be changing. And in our case that would mean that chord five would be different because you would build chord five or the, the seventh chord version by doing five, seven, two, and then four. So that chord would be affected too. Just wanted you to kind of have that to think about. So what does this mean in practice, right? 
So let's look at a specific chord progression. Let's look at that one, two, five, one progression, right? Super common progression happens all the time. Probably the second most common chord progression right behind one, four, five. So in G major, you would play a G, and then you'd play an A minor, there's our two chord, then you'd play a D major, and actually I'm gonna invert it and put it, or no, I'm just gonna move it down, put it here, and then back to one. And this chord I am inverting. This is a, a G major chord, and I'm just putting that note down there, just to kind of smooth it out a little. So it'd be one, two, five, one. Hooray. In G Lydian, that chord progression becomes this. Totally different feel. Let me play it again. Right? Now here's why this is so different. For one, this chord progression, when we play it in G Lydian, this chord's a major chord. Major chord has a brighter, sort of happier feel to it. So just on the surface level, it's just different because there's no minor chord in this progression anymore. But if you think about how this chord relates to this chord, and this is a little bit mind bending here, but try to imagine we're in the key of D major for a second, meaning D is our one chord, you know, the, the first chord in the key. The, the five chord in the key of D major would be an A major. And I'll try to show that here, like this is our one chord in D major, this is our five chord. And the five chord, it has tension, it wants to resolve back to the one chord. Now what that means here is that even though G is our key center, even though this is our one chord, when we do a one, two, five progression and we make the two chord into a major chord, that means that it now has tension and it resolves to the five chord. So it creates this almost like secondary key center. It makes your mind kind of get attached to this D, D major chord for a second. And then the D major chord resolves back to the G chord. Now I did a whole lesson on how to change keys and key centers and that really gets at this whole concept. So if you're curious about this, I go watch that one, but that's kind of what's happening here. You're almost setting up this like temporary secondary little key center. And all that happens inside of just this one, two, five progression. So here it is again in G major. That definitely does not happen. There's no secondary key center or anything like that. But here it is again in G Lydian. This chord has tension to it and it kind of resolves to that one. And then this one, moves into the G chord. So already a very interesting progression. Now, if we look at the four chord for a second, you might be starting to get a sense of what this one will do also. In, in both cases here, these two chords are kind of setting up a little bit of a tension resolution towards note number five. If you think of it again in terms of D major, C sharp or C sharp diminished, that's chord number seven in the key of D major. And chord number seven, it also has a tension that wants to resolve to the D chord. So in D major again, we're looking at this chord, C sharp diminished, which resolves to the D. So effectively, a very similar thing is going to happen here. Uh, so let's compare those two. So one, four, five, again, the most common progression probably ever in G major. Uh, I'll do it that way, okay? I'm, again, just inverting this last G chord. So, there it is. One, four, five, back to one. The most boring progression of all of them. Now, if you do that in, in G Lydian, let this car go by. Okay. C becomes C sharp diminished. Right? Very different and very interesting. Again, on the surface, even just comparing one, four, five to one sharp four, five, this means that, you know, in this case, you're playing major chord, major chord, major chord, lots of major chords. In this case, you're playing major chord, diminished chord, which is very different, very interesting, and then major chord back to one. So even just the quality of the chords becomes very different. And it's, it's a really interesting play on a very common chord progression. 
but there's something more subtle, which is this tension that resolves to the five chord, which then resolves back to the one chord. And it creates this whole other little thing happening inside this really simple chord progression. Now, looking at the last chord here, F sharp minor, this one's a little less dramatic, um, but it's still very cool and very interesting. Let's say we wanted to do a, we'll just make it simple, one, seven, one progression, right? Which would just mean that here's our G chord, here's our seven chord, back to G. Same idea, the seven chord, this diminished seven, it has a very strong tension. It wants to resolve back to the one. So we get this very strong sort of tension resolution happening in, in G. But if we do it, if we do the sort of G Lydian version, that means that you know, we have our one chord. Instead of this diminished seven, which has this real strong tension, we would get, and well, it's hard to do without messing up my letters. We would get this. doesn't carry quite the same tension to it because it's not a diminished chord, although it still does have this leading tone. It still has that, but it totally changes the dynamics of that chord progression. So that actually lets you use a seven chord without it needing to be a diminished chord. Instead of that really strong diminished chord sort of flavor that really stands out, you get something much smoother, like just a minor chord, and it totally changes the dynamics of that. So that's what happens when you change this one note. Now that's what happens to all the chords. Three of them change and it completely changes the feel and the sound and the way all these different progressions work. Now, quick little time out here, something I should talk about. The terminology on this can get a little bit hazy. Some people will say that, you know, a key just means your, your tonal center, meaning you're in the key of G and there's, you know, G, there's not really a G minor or a G major or anything else. It's just you're in G and you happen to be using the, the minor mode or the major mode or whatever. Other people will say, yes, there's major keys, there's minor keys, but modes aren't really a thing. Like, you know, you can be in G major and you're sort of using the G Lydian mode. You wouldn't really call it the key of G Lydian. Other people say, that's dumb. It's the key of G Lydian, or the key of G major, or you could call it G Ionian, because those mean the same thing, or A minor, or A Dorian, or whatever. I'm one of those people, I think that's just a simpler way to talk about it, but honestly, it depends on what musical time period you look at, it depends on which music professor you talk to, it's all just, there's not really a set way of, of doing it. Hold on. Here's the little interrupter. Say hi. Forgot what I was saying. Anyway, if someone argues with you or wants to debate it, it doesn't really matter. Like, it's just different names for a different concept. But think of it this way. Like, you can use this group of notes or you can use this group of notes. And whether you choose to call this, you know, the key of G Lydian or you choose to say that it's G major but using the Lydian mode, you're really talking about the same thing. So I just wanted to kind of cover that point before we go any farther. Now, let's look at the, the melody part of this equation, right? You know, one way of using these notes is to play them together and create chords, but the other way is to just to play them one after another and create melodies. So there's really two different ways you can approach this. One is that you could, and I'm gonna use this term, you could be in the key of G Lydian which means that you'd be using these different chords and if we did a one, two, five progression, it would be G major, A major, D major, right? That's, that's our progression. And so in this case, you would almost always be using a C sharp if you're creating a melody, especially if you were, say, playing an A major chord. If we're, we're using these chords and I play, so I'm doing this one, two, five progression, I do a G and then, and then I do an A major, it would be silly of me to play a C natural, you know, this note, along with this chord. That's why. It would sound quite terrible, because I'm using this harmony, so I would definitely want to be using this note. So essentially, if I'm in G Lydian, I'm just going to use the notes from G Lydian and harmonize them with the chords in the same way that I normally do, which would be, you know, if I'm playing an A major chord, I can choose to play, you know, notes out of this key that are part of the chord, so... 
A, or an E, if I had more room here, or C sharp. Those are, you know, chord tones, meaning they're notes from the chord. Or I could play notes that are outside the chord, but still in the key. So I could be playing a B, if I can find one. Or I could be playing a D, right? And kind of use the tension of those notes, but it would be silly of me to try to play this note. So that's really all there is to it in that sense. If you're in G Lydian, Use the different notes, harmonize them with the chords in kind of the same sense that you would with this. But it's worth noting that if you're creating a melody and say you did something simple like in G major land, we say we did one, three, four, five, three, one, right? Dumb little melody. If we did this in G Lydian, it's way more interesting. It's got this odd sharp sound but same idea as the chords this note kind of has a tension to it and it resolves into the five chord so in kind of a small sense or a small scale no pun intended I guess on a small level it's doing what the chord progressions were doing which was kind of temporarily setting this up as a sort of key center so in that sense it is a little different now here's the other way of looking at this you could be in the key of G major and be using the chords from G major, but in your melody, you could sort of borrow the notes or, or kind of use these guys to do interesting things with your melody. Now, you're not really switching into G Lydian because you're not using the chords, you're not harmonizing them, and you're not establishing this whole new set of notes that you're using. But you can use that melody to kind of do some interesting things. This is my favorite one, and this is what I love about the Lydian mode. There is this huge problem with, with a basic major scale, and that has to do with your one chord. And I think I kind of covered this in the previous like intro to modes video. But essentially, if you play, if you're in a major key and you play your one chord, which is this G chord, and you try to play note number four, so it's a, a non-chord tone, a note that isn't in the chord, but it is in the key, Often, it sounds terrible. This C natural just does not harmonize with that chord well at all. Now, it's certainly okay to use it if you're careful. If you move through it quickly and you don't really hear it against the chord, it doesn't sound so bad, but you really have to be careful about that. In fact, it's such a problem that it's... In, this isn't totally true, but in most cases, that's why people use pentatonic scales. If you've ever talk to a guitarist, they will tell you all about pentatonic scales. In a pentatonic scale, you know, penta meaning five, it's a scale that leaves out this note. I think it also leaves out this one for similar reasons, but basically it omits this note so that if you're, say, playing a guitar solo, you never run into this problem. You never accidentally play a note that has this really awful, clashy sound to it. That's pretty much what a pentatonic scale is for, at least what it's commonly used for. So that's a huge problem. But, by borrowing notes from the G Lydian mode, you can get around that. You can use this C sharp, and it sounds interesting. It has its own kind of tension, and I really wish I had a C sharp over here, but you can hear it well enough, I guess. It has this little tension sound, it resolves into the five, but you don't get that really ugly, weird sounding harmony with that. So, Again, without changing keys, I'm not in G Lydian in any sense, really. I'm just borrowing some of the notes. I can get around that really ugly problem and just make some pretty cool melodies. Like, that's a cool sound, at least to me. I think it sounds awesome. Now, there is one thing that you have to be careful of. If you're in G major and say you're playing your two chord, which is A minor, like this. If you're playing this chord, you would not want to use your sharp four from the Lydian mode. Right, that would be C sharp. It would sound like that. Basically, since you're using this note in a harmony, you know, it's one of the notes that you're currently harmonizing, you wouldn't want to use the sort of alternate universe version of that note at the same time. You're kind of doing two things at once. And I'm not saying never do this, because it's an artistic decision to begin with, but I don't really like the way that sounds. And in most cases, you probably won't either. So. I would avoid doing that kind of thing. 
And of course, the same thing would go for if you're using, you know, your four chord, so a C major chord, trying to play a C sharp at the same time. Probably not a sound you want, and then, you know, same thing for the, for the F sharp, or F sharp diminished chord. You'd have the same problem, trying to play C sharp at the same time. Oh, oh no, sounds okay. You might be able to do something with that. I'll leave that up to you. But that's something you have to be very aware of if you're sort of using the, uh, the G Lydian melodies while you're in G major. Okay, so I'm realizing that this video is already really long and I've only covered one mode, so I'm gonna leave it at that, which might be a little disappointing because of course there are many other modes. But I will wait for your feedback to tell me if you think I ought to try to go into that or if you kind of got the idea and you can see how this, this works for all the rest of them, like the Dorian and all those other ones. But I do want to say this, this concept fundamentally is very simple. You know, we look at a scale or a group of notes that you're hopefully at least familiar with, and you change one thing about them and then look at the ways that that affects, you know, all the different things that you do with those notes, you know, the chords that it makes, the melodies that you make with it, and it kind of trickles down into, you know, everything you, you do with this group of notes. But the same thing would hold true for example, with like a harmonic minor scale. You know, say you have a, a minor key or a minor scale, and then you look at what happens when you take one of those notes and move it over, which, which is how you get the harmonic minor scale. The same kinds of things would happen. The same kinds of things happen when you compare the natural minor with the Dorian scale. You have one note that changes there, and very similar things kind of, you know, play out and trickle down. So as a good sort of homework mental exercise you know try looking at one of those things see what you can figure out from you know the dorian scale as it compares to the minor or the harmonic minor and let me know what you'd like to see next um, i know that i'm getting into some of the more advanced concepts here in music theory so let me know if you'd like me to get back into some of the more basic things i'll do whatever you want um so yeah i hope this was informative i know it's more advanced um but yeah, i hope you liked it so anyway I will uh, see you in the next one. Let me know what you think that ought to be. See you later.